What's going on everybody? The real Sharif M here, aka Mangana Steel, finally getting to one of my favorite of the newer designers uh, in the game. Arcane Design, man. Arcane Design has been doing some really unique and very, very cool new knife designs, and I I love it. I love it. Uh, before I get into it, I just wanted to remind you to please like, comment, subscribe, drop your thoughts down in the comments below. I absolutely love it. I'm trying to get to 500 subscribers and would really, really appreciate your help. Now, let me explain. One of the reasons why I love Arcane Design is regardless of whether you like his designs or not, uh, whether they fit in their your hands or not, he is personally injecting some much needed new life into an otherwise very stagnant industry. I can't tell you how bored I'm getting by seeing every manufacturer out there basically producing the same knife. It's all drop points, it's all button locks, it's all this, it's all that. And it, I have a lot of trouble distinguishing. Really, if you took the labels off, one brand's knives from the next. And you cannot say that with Arcane Design. Like, you just can't. The They're so unique, so, in my opinion, beautiful. Um, and even brutal, that it really is bringing some, for lack of a better way of putting it, new life into this industry. And I'm just so thrilled by that. I've been one of his earliest, earliest fans. So I am going to do a few videos here about some of the different designs. We have the Necronauts, we have the Crawler, and we have one of the latest models, uh, the Abyss. And unfortunately, these are the only ones I have. I've missed out on some drops, or I haven't had the money at the time that they were available. But I consider myself very lucky to have these. And, uh, you know, really, I'm so in love, actually, with, with Arcane Design. So let's talk about them. Let's let's begin here with the Necronauts. Take the crawler out, take the abyss out. And so you may be wondering why do I have two Necronauts? Well, that's because I was actually lucky enough to win this guy. This is one of the first edition prototypes, actually. Uh, back when Israel was working on bringing these to market, he was exploring different manufacturers. And uh, he did his first initial prototypes with uh, Riyadh. And to my knowledge, uh, he has since switched over to Best Tech for mass production, which I have no complaints about. Uh, but if we look at this first guy, this was a Riot prototype, actually. And this shows his initial concept for the Necronaut. So there are some definitely distinct differences between this guy and what finally entered into production. One of them that you'll notice, actually, very quickly is the size and placement of this flipper tab, which I really don't have any complaints about. It was a bit long here, I'm not gonna lie. You know, when you start looking at the knife, you know, in, in this profile, that does protrude quite a fair amount versus the actual production one is quite a bit smaller, quite a bit smaller. Another place where you can see some differences between the two knives was actually in this little tail section here. Uh, the feedback that he got from 
uh, different reviewers and people said that this was a bit too long, actually. So when you compare the two, you can really see where he kind of cut that off. And let me see if I can line them up. Yeah, so this is the two of them lined up. Look at how big of a difference that actually is. It's quite substantial, and you can even see how there was a extra kink right here in the handle. Now, I can honestly tell you, gripping the two, you actually don't really feel a significant difference between them, uh, even with my extra large to double extra large hands. Um, it doesn't really make a big difference. The blade style, the blade shape, even the blade length, uh, all stayed the same. You see? You can literally put them on top of one another and they are mirror images of one another from every other respect. So, a lot stayed, but just these two particular details, uh, I believe, were the primary changes here. So it's really, for me, exciting to be able to look at and compare, you know, the prototype, uh, the initial vision versus what entered into mass production. So this guy, the prototype, is definitely a safe queen for me. I'm, um, like I said, I'm a big Israel and Arcane Design fan. And I feel exceedingly privileged to have this guy. I, I just am over the moon to have one of the original prototypes of his very first design to enter in the market. Now, let's talk about the Necronaut. As you can see from the dirt on the blade and here from all of my snail trails, this is a user for me, and all of my users that I get from Arcane, I always do in just this blasted finish for the handle. Um, I really made a mistake, in my opinion. I feel like when I got this guy, I should have gotten it with the satin blade, so they matched up, but I wanted to kind of mix things up. It would have been really nice for these to, to match like it, they, they were a series. But man, I love the grind here on the M390 with his large bevels here. It really shows off the grinds very, very well. They're very satisfying. And it just makes for a beastly everyday carry knife. And I actually absolutely love this. It is incredibly useful actually on the day to day. If you know me, I do love a nice fine point for doing piercing tasks. And this just bold interpretation of the traditional American Tonto makes this thing a joy to use. Uh, I really love this large, long, flat section. It makes push cutting incredibly easy, makes it very, very uh, delightful to use. And then I can kind of come up here, put my finger on the flipper tab, and use the Tonto edge for cutting through things at an angle. And it's really nice. I mean, one of my all-time favorite knives is this guy, the Laconico Easy e and you can see it's a similar concept between the long flat uh, uh, primary bevel here and then the angle Tonto tip. So I, I am a Tonto fan, personally, and I think this is one of the ultimate sort of versions of the Tonto. Uh, and I, and I do mean that, ultimate versions. It just takes the concept and has no apologies, no, no reservations, no limitations. It just went for it. And it is 
truly a wonderful knife to EDC. Uh, I love using the little transitionary edge here to pop it into packaging and just cut with it, which is great because generally with the Tonto, especially with one with the tip so high, you're not really coming all the way up here for utility cuts. I use this edge right here for utility cuts. And so uh, actually one of the knives that I designed uh, was somewhat inspired by this called the Kaimano. And it came from my love of Tontos, just like this. Now, as far as the rest of the knife is concerned, we have titanium handles and uh, some mild contouring, titanium backspacer, and pocket clip. Just in general, really well thought out. All the details put in the right places. And one of the things that Israel kind of brought into the industry, which I do think is pretty ingenious, is a level of modification and customization uh, in a very affordable and well thought out way. So one of the things that you'll see are these shields here. And they really do serve a purpose as being both an aesthetic sort of uh, accoutrement, but also in the case, for example, here, it is an over-travel stop for the lock bar. However, he offers these in a number of colors, uh, even in Timascus, which you will see later when we get to my crawler. And it allows the user to add his or her own flavor to their particular knife. Now, for me, his initial concept was to use red with the Necronaut. And I like it on all black, like this guy, but I did not care for it with this uh, just blasted titanium finish. And so for me as an, like an everyday user sort of knife, I actually preferred black. I wanted the black to match the hardware and the backspacer and the pocket clip. So I opted to get these in black. And it, for some people, it may make the knife look a little bit more ordinary, which, come on, how does this thing look ordinary at all? But that's how I liked to put this together. And I think it's really ingenious because it's fairly affordable to do, but it gives this sort of concept of mass customization to the end user. And I like the idea of him selling these as sets. I thought it was a pretty ingenious business move. Um, it gives people another touch point. It gives people an opportunity to invest in their particular knife and uh man i i so surprised that china hasn't essentially ripped this concept off from him because like they have the manufacturing ability they can do the skews you know uh so why aren't they offering this to you know the end users to further differentiate and personalize their designs. Why do we need 20 versions of the same knife? Why do I need to buy the same knife over and over again if I can just buy these shields and maybe a pocket clip as a set and customize my personal knife? I mean, these things are supposed to last you a while. So why do I need 10 of the same thing? <laughs> Like really, if I, it, and that's that's the beauty of this from a design and a sort of uh, marketing perspective, like I can change this if my feeling changes. So if I want to rock the red versions, I can. I believe he offered like a raw version, if I'm not mistaken at some point. So you could do your own anodizing. So if you wanted like purple, you know, you could which was great, you know, or blurple, however you want to say that. So I thought this was a really ingenious addition to 
his sort of design ethos when it came to this knife gave the user a level of personalization and customization that we really haven't seen anywhere else in the knife industry thus far. So uh, I I like it, and I believe Null Knives uh, recently picked up on that with the Voodoo, or maybe even with the Raiden, he offered uh, sets of parts uh, for upgrade, like with Timascus and stuff like that. But it, very few people, I think, have truly gone down this route because essentially, you know, Arcane owns that now. That is their thing. So really, really well thought out, really well, well done. One of the things that I do love also design-wise about this knife is just the thought to have this relief here, which just really allows you to put more pressure on the flipper tab and you know, you're not hitting just the, the straight titanium. And that was one of the changes you'll see here versus the prototype. The prototype doesn't have that, but it has a much larger flipper tab. So the transition to a much smaller flipper tab, as you can see there, uh, I believe, you know, I'd like to believe necessitated this. And it's it's a very welcome uh, addition. I, I don't know what the, the technical name is. I just call it like a flipper tab relief. Um, action on these are absolutely wonderful. They're a joy to use. And... The ergonomics are definitely, for me, they bias towards a hammer grip or a saber grip. Uh, if you look here, it's just on the edge, just on the edge of, you know, kind of my finger getting into that little uh, transition point between this finger relief. I won't call it a choil, but a big finger relief. We still do have that secondary transition here, but it's a lot less pronounced than on the prototype. And it just nestles the knife very nicely into the hand. And just even for my double extra large, extra large hands, this thing just kind of settles in in a comfortable way. I actually pinch grip this knife a lot. And again, it just, this little edge transition here gets into the crook of my hand and I can actually put apply pressure right on the back end here and just, you know, do my cuts very comfortably. So overall, I think this is a really well resolved design. Uh, again, it may be a little intense and brutal for some, but for me, this is absolutely stunning. And truth be told, this is one of my favorite aesthetics. I like the sort of angular, geometric sort of design aesthetics I always have, even when I was in design school. Uh, it's just not something that I naturally do or, or really have the sophistication in control over. Um, I'm much more of a, an organic designer. So when you compare, for example, the lines here of the Grazioso, the Grazioso tends to be about more kind of like organic flow and organic sort of lines. And by organic, we mean sort of like naturally occurring lines. It looks, you know, softer in a sense, than the straight lines and edges here of the arcane design. But I am so in love with this. I've always been a big fan of just nice, bold, straight geometric designs. And truth be told, nobody does it better than arcane design, hands down. So hope you guys like this, and we will continue the video next with a crawler. Have a good one. Take care and catch you in the next one.